And the, the mechanism um, is also very different. And the, the thing to look at is the spacing here of the two winding holes. See, they're quite close together, far closer together than you'll see virtually any other clock because John's changed the layout of the mechanisms inside. And whereas normally all standard layouts has the great wheel both at the back, when they're both at the back, they take up a lot of room. Whereas if you put them one at the front and one at the back, you can overlap the great wheels and use smaller plates. Why do you want to use smaller plates? Less expensive. None of the innovations is that John has fitted the count wheel straight onto the great wheel. He's cut the uh, count wheel out of a sheet of brass and then it's been riveted on. And that's a big saving from having a separate arbor to mount the count wheel on up the back of the clock here. So, so now the count wheel is onto the great wheel. The great wheel is part of the barrel and the barrel has 16 turns and the clock mechanism goes round once every 12 hours which brings the count wheel round with it. So it's more reliable, um, it's easier to make, it's a win-win development. There's a lot of thought gone into the escape wheel mechanism. First of all, the arbor for the pallets is square. It's a, a simple way of locking the pallets, which are often just brazed in with uh, a round hole on a round arbor by locking them onto a square arbor. And then the two pallets are longer than usual. And you can see the slot in the back plate to let them in and out so that uh, John could disassemble and play with the angles and uh, get it exactly right without taking the whole mechanism apart. And so that the two pallets are long, it's ceasing to look like an anchor and it's got these two long pallets coming down. And you can see the recoil, the recoil backwards and the recoil forwards for each swing of the, the pendulum. The mechanism is actually being driven backwards by the swing of the pendulum.